again with another video thank you so much for joining me i appreciate everyone thank you so much for liking and subscribing it really helps me a lot and don't forget to check out my website paradoxastrology.com i am a professional astrologer and i can help you with anything okay let's get in this video i really want to talk about this because it popped into my head and i started doing a lot more research about it and these are my theories about rahu and ball this is the conclusion that i've come to but i don't know everything this is just my conclusion i am nobody i am not the knower of anything so feel free to come to your own conclusions and use this as maybe a guide let me talk about what made me get to this conclusion i will say that i did hear seven bomar talk about this and at the time he was talking about this i didn't really understand until i really understood astrology and understood what he was talking about when he said that a lot of these deities that we were given from previous ancestors or that people use today are not what they think they are for example a lot of them pretend or say that they are the energy of jupiter so it was hard for me to understand say someone like zeus or someone that they say uses the energy of jupiter just like they say in the catholic religion how jesus is the sun but that doesn't really make sense in astrology now that i understand what he was talking about i'm going to take it a little bit further because i didn't hear him say this part about how all of these deities actually are really rahu now let me explain the energy of the planets makes up our entire universe it makes up everything it makes up you it makes up me it makes up all the plants all the animals everything and everything has its own birth chart all the things come down to is the seven planets and the nodes that's it all the planets which are not above they are actually inside of you relate to all the chakras you have all the energy that you'll ever need inside of you but how that energy is being projected depends on your birth chart it depends on how the energy is aligned when you were born your birth chart also dictates what you look like it dictates how you present it, everything everything comes down to astrology even a lot of people who do numerology don't even realize this or people who do gematria may not realize this you don't realize that all the numbers equal planets so it's not that everything is numbers it's everything is planets and that's what creates the number this is why I don't practice witchcraft anymore. I know this is going to hurt a lot of people's feelings if they're a witch or they're this or that. Witchcraft was stolen ancient knowledge from thousands and thousands of years ago, repurposed and given to us as witchcraft in a watered down version of how the universe really works without giving us real information on how to create without giving us real information on what rituals really are what are rituals rituals are only bringing down the energy from the planets which are actually within as above as so below within yourself you're learning how to manipulate energy how to use energy to your benefit how to bring it down how to put it in another object how to put it in yourself how to to use that energy to bring it in and then manifest something outside yourself that's what you're doing a lot of witches don't know astrology so they don't know this or they know astrology but they're using the astrology that was given to us the watered down version of astrology which is western astrology now a lot of people are gonna get mad at me about that okay but if you're a good astrologer you're still going to be a good astrologer if you use western astrology if you can look at pattern recognition you're still going to be good but it's missing the spirit they took the spirit out of it then in western astrology they told you that the nodes mean something that they don't in vedic astrology what represents really dark energy or like a demon type energy or like a ball type energy all of that that comes from rahu rahu is the illusion the illusion in our physical world rahu is what puts people asleep but it's also what we need for our physical reality to thrive because if we didn't have rahu we wouldn't want any material things so rahu is the ego rahu is one part of those rahu and then there's ketu which are the head rahu is the head ketu is the tail of this dragon see the dragon symbolism where that comes from k2 is your higher self k2 is the ancestors k2 is how you came in here it's your past lives not in the sense of time linear though rahu that they say is kind of like the future but 
That's what they say in Western astrology, but you're missing the whole real concept of it. It is your future. It is the future. And in a sense, it can be an illusionary future. It could be you and your ego wanting all these material things. Now, when we want material things, what people tend to do is rituals for the most part. There are rituals, you know, to save people and things like that. But for the most part, people will use rituals for material gain. Rahu can give you a lot of material gain and it can take it away. It can give you a lot of highs and lows and unexpected things happening. What they did is they made you believe that all these beings, even though it is technically true that if everyone believes in one thought of something, it can manifest itself. It's manifesting itself using the energy of Baal using the energy of Rahu. They told you it was something else. I'm going to give you an example. Back in the day in temples, they would sacrifice humans to Baal. I'm going to read this paragraph. It said, human sacrifice, including child sacrifices, worship to God Baal at Baalbek Temple. When we turn to mythology to help understand these calamities, we find puzzling insights. It says the Greek writer Homer told how the mighty sky god Zeus cast thunderbolts on earth and tumbled the walls of Troy with his earthquakes. The inhabitants of Baalbek feared Baal. This god was their name for Zeus, also known as Jupiter and Amen. I'm going to tell you that this is not Jupiter. Be most familiar with Rahu when we have eclipses. Rahu is a shadow planet with no physical existence. That is why it impacts adversely the placement of other planets. So when we have an eclipse, that's either Rahu or Ketu eclipsing the planet. So that shadow you see going over, that's Rahu or Ketu. And what that causes to the planet, it causes illusionaries. That's why eclipses create such a massive energy because it's eclipsing that planet. That's why there's been so many talks about Rahu in history because people are so afraid of eclipses, so afraid of Rahu, so afraid of the demon that was overshadowing or taking over the sun and or taking over the moon eclipsing it they would call that a demon in ancient times so when rahu is a conjunct a planet or next to a planet eclipsing it rahu starts using that planet for its own selfish interests so if you didn't know you could think this is really jupiter you could think this is really Venus and you could think this is really wisdom or this is actual real luxury, but there's something underlying it. Rahu is a good shadow planet and it's able to make you think that it's really that. It overtakes the quality of the planet when in conjunct with them. Also behaves like the sign lord in which it is placed. So it will behave just like that planet. And while giving results, the results will be similar to Saturn. That's another planet that people use to create certain things in our existence. Saturn has to do with restriction, the government authority. So Rahu and Saturn are always used in rituals. It's not these beings, but they're making you believe that. Now, remember how I said that Baal is actually the god of rain, thunder, and extraordinary bolts of lightning. And then they thought that was Jupiter. That's not Jupiter. Jupiter is not the lord of those things. And this is why astrology is very important. This is why they hide astrology. They don't want you to realize this. Rahu is the lord of thunder and lightning. Rahu K2 is sperm, the head and the tail. Rahu has to do with viruses that are created, that are spread. Rahu has to do with occult things, voodoo, sorcery, evil. It has to do witchcraft, practitioners, because during the new moon, the rays of Rahu will fall on earth and only during the full moon, sacrifices start happening. So Rahu not only is the deity of the lightning bolt, they say Baal is actually the god of fertility. Well, Rahu Ketu is the sperm. The exaltation of Rahu is in Taurus, which is fertility. So all this is stolen and eclipse, eclipse the truth, literally, to make you believe that you're actually practicing this, these spells to Jupiter, to Venus and all that. But meanwhile, it's just Rahu. So we were given incorrect information. That's why they give you witchcraft. That's fine. They give you witchcraft because it's not actually telling you the truth of what these beings really are. And it will backfire on you. Ra is very unpredictable. Also, the goddess Kali and other deities are of Rahu. Kali, you will always see with the tongue open like that. This is why you always see rappers doing that. 
This is the goddess female rappers. This is the goddess Kali. They're bringing out Rahu. Our whole existence is based on Rahu because if we didn't have Rahu, well, we need a little bit of Rahu, but if Rahu didn't exist in the way it is right now, people would be awake to this. That This would be common knowledge. We wouldn't have lost all our information from the ancestors, which is K2, because right now we don't have our ancestor information. We only have our Rahu. We're only moving forward without the information from the ancestors. So Rahu is also that obsession of wanting all material things, wanting money, grind hard, hustle hard, you know, that obsession, no sleep, work all night, work all day, get money, get money, die trying, all of this, all of that, 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 that's Rahu. And that's why people get so caught up. If people go through periods of Rahu, they lose themselves in some way. They find themselves eventually, hopefully, but they always lose themselves in this illusion, chasing these material gains, thinking that's where all the information is going to come from and it's not so rahu is the cause of the beings and illusion the illusion the sleep rahu wants freedom right so it develops what it can for all its own interests it can bring around a lot of changes in people's residence friends its life purpose everything it can change that it's very selfish it wants what it wants for its own selfish gain the perfect solar eclipse is caused by Rahu, but the perfect lunar eclipse is caused by Ketu. Now they say, if you guys ever heard about the story of Nimrod, Samaria has declared that her son Tamas was an actuality in return or rebirth of her husband Nimrod. Hence, through his teachings and doctrine of reincarnation was born. And since Tamas was born on December 25th, this day was highly honored and recognized by Nimrod's supporters. Note, therefore, that the date, December 25th, was observed in the honor of the birth of Tamas long before Christianity existed, and that it was not till many centuries later that this pagan custom Christianized the day of Christ. When Nimrod, the founder of Babylon, died, Samarius told the people that her husband's spirit had been taken possession by the sun. And she encouraged the people to pay homage to her husband while worshiping the sun. Thus began the evil practice of sun worship. Now, beg to differ that what in Christianity, what people are actually worshiping is not the sun. It is Rahu. It's the illusion of the sun. That's why this God is vengeful. That's why this God is jealous. It's a jealous God. It's a God you should fear, which is Rahu. You shouldn't fear the sun. The sun is, there's nothing to fear about the sun. If it was really the sun, there's nothing to fear about Jupiter. Jupiter is a benefic. There's nothing to fear about Jupiter. Jupiter gives you wisdom, abundance, expansion. You know, you maybe, maybe expand a little bit too much. That could happen, you know, your waistline or something. But in the most part, this is not to fear. So what I'm saying is all these rituals that people are doing are to the Rahu energy, which is the science of bringing down the energy. I'm going to show you another example of the fraternity that the Boule uses. Now, you're going to notice in these pictures, they use, they go like this, right? Now, notice when you go like this, what does that look like? K2. What symbol do they use that they say is just a Greek letter? And that's the reason they use it. Rahu. These are the boule. This is the fraternity that you need to be in in order to make it in the physical world. Some of the most successful people in Shabahista who controlled the Nishta, which are the world famous, the most famous people in the world, right? These people are usually behind them, is ruled by Rahu and Saturn. So in order to control the world, we need Saturn authority and Rahu, an illusion to put everyone under a spell. That's really what the spell is, is the illusion of Rahu. The spell that you're putting someone under is you're activating their own Rahu. And the plants can do that to you too. So if you see kind of what I'm getting at here, that this is actually a science. I've read a lot of the books of the actual sorcerers that do blood rituals and they don't believe in beings. I've only seen that in witchcraft that is this new age witchcraft. Everybody who is actually a real sorcerer uses ancient knowledge. This modern day thing is kind of a joke. If you actually study, it's using the energy, bringing the energy of the planets, knowing how to use the energy of the planets which is what real witchcraft is. All of the actual stories of witchcraft and even the burnings aren't true. They're not truth. I'll do a video about that. If you really want to get good at energy, you're going to have to understand the real 
side of energy, how energy really works, how you use the planets, astrology. This is where your true power is, how to activate your chakras so that you know how to use these energies properly. What you see, all these rituals that are being done are not being done to this physical being. And then you sacrifice a human and this being shows up and is like, hey, what can I give you? It's not that. You're bringing up the energy of Rahu and you know how to harness it and you know how to project it into what you want to create. Now, there are darker beings. Any being that's in, in this universe is using the energy of the planet. So it's using that Rahu energy. But at the same time, this is not something to be afraid of because Rahu is positive and negative. It's your ego. It's your personality too. If you think about it, it's your personality in this world. People will say the sun, but yeah, but Rahu is your ego, like who you're kind of portraying in this world. It's not a bad thing and it's how you use it. And nobody can put a spell on you or put you to sleep if you're awake. So you don't have to worry about spells. You don't have to worry about any of that. That's why a lot of these spells don't work. First of all, you need astrology. You need to know when that nakshatra of Rahu is coming up to even do that spell. Sorcerers know it because they use Vedic astrology or they use Jewish astrology and they know how the energies affect the body. That is real sorcery. So when people say, well, I worship Baal, it's not a bad thing. It's, it's within. Yeah, it is within you. And you can worship it. You can do all the mantras to Rahu and it'll actually align you. But just know that when you hear people doing rituals to all these beings, what they're really doing is just doing rituals to Rahu. Religion has people now praying to things that they think are the son of God. And then other people say, oh, and it's the sun, but it's not the sun. It's Rahu. It's Rahu eclipsing the sun. All of these secret societies, they know this. That's why they use astrology. If you look at this picture right here of the Freemasons, why is there astrology on it? It's because they know this. Also, if you look at this picture too, Capricorn, which has Rahu. They just know, but I doubt they tell you this in a secret society. You're getting manipulated. Learn for yourself. You'll see what I'm talking about. Also, if you look at Baal on Wikipedia, horrific meaning owner and lord, which is lord of a sign. Lord means of a sign of Arashi. Scholars previously associated the Anahim with solar cults because Rahu eclipses the sun and with a variety of unrelated patron deities. It's also associated with storm and fertility god, Hadad, and local manifestations. So the Hebrew Bible, it talks about Leviathan deities and that use was taken over in Christianity and Islam and under the form Beelzebub in demonology. So all of these things, I'm telling you, all these things are actually Rahu. That's why they're solar cults, because it's actually Rahu. They also say that Marduk was Jupiter, which they also say is Baal as well. That's Rahu conjunct Jupiter and it's deceiving them because they don't know astrology and that's why the actual meaning for the nodes is not correct in western astrology. It can be used for good purposes by everyone. That's just my video. If you ever want me to go more in depth on that, maybe I will and uh, maybe I won't. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate everyone and I'll see you in the next video.